everybody. This is Betsy Mink with AITainment. This is the season finale. I am super excited to be here right now. And I hope that you know, I am so happy with our guest today, Mr. Robert Scobles in the studio. Just you wait. We are going to have so much fun here today. Check this out, guys. The first thing is, let me see right here. What do we got for you? We got this, guys. <laughs> season finale i have an amazing amazing show for you today we want to bring him up right away because i can't wait anymore i've been waiting forever to speak to this person we have robert scoble in the house today he is a tech maxi ai maxi an author a blogger a really cool guy and my friend we met on x and um let's bring him to the stage i want to talk to him about ai what's up <laughs> whoa what'd you do with my friend Robert, are you there? I'm sorry. I was just fooling around. <laughs> Hi. What what is that? Is that the Vision Pro? Yeah. The future. So, it's just heavy and expensive. It'll get cheaper and lighter next year. Wonderful. It's great to have you here, Robert. So good to have you here on AI Tainment. I know you have your own AI show called Unaligned. Yeah. So I, I appreciate you coming to my show. And that, that was BK Han. He was here for a moment. He stepped out and he wanted me to give you a big hello. He might be able to come in and say hi um, on location in Singapore. But uh, Robert, what is going on? AI has taken over the world. What are we going to do about it? Um, play at Coachella next year with some AI music, you know? <laughs> Coachella is go. going on literally right now. And the first uh, um, virtual performer just performed uh, Friday night. And so... Uh, I thought that was significant that, you know, that there's a performer performing on an LED screen in front of 10,000 people and everybody's having a good time and nobody cares that it's not a human being, right? That's amazing. It, it, it makes me think yeah. of Alex Utopia's uh, articles as of late, just about how the superstar is going to be taken over by AI. And uh, therefore yeah. there won't be the, you know, uh, how did he put it? Basically, that the music industry has lots of people working for it and not getting enough benefit necessarily. So then, yeah. um, the AI, the AI superstar. So uh, I also saw Grimes. You had posted yesterday on X Grimes. She was amazing. Um, yeah, she she was had a whole bunch of AI art behind her on the big LED screens that that are at Coachella, and that was also. I uh, I don't know that it was first because I I think I've seen AI art before at Coachella, but it, significant I think it, you it know so, because new art is being introduced to people. It was so powerful, you know, just the clip. So you're so you're chilling in your house on the Vision Pro, experiencing yeah. Coachella, and it's it it feels like you're there. And so yeah. on X we share that it felt like I was there, and it's just amazing how the the sound was incredible. Speaking about yeah. sound, don't you have like a large library of music that's yeah? For, I mean, you know, if people don't know who I am, I, I had a famous tech blog in Silicon Valley for a decade where I launched a lot of companies. I, I was the 79th user of Instagram. Mercedes Benz gave me its first ride and its first autonomous car. Um, I launched Flipboard, Siri was launched in my house, right? So I, I've, I've, I've been around. And that got me involved in a whole bunch of music industry stuff. I've sp spoken at music and tech conferences and uh, gone to Nashville and been in Neil Young's studio. We can talk about all that stuff. Wow. Right? But so um, I've always been interested in uh, surround sound music. I used to sell audio gear in the 80s in our consumer. I worked in a consumer electronics store in Silicon Valley 
back in the 80s selling cameras mostly but uh, we had uh, audio room where we sold audio we sold car stereos we sold vcrs and tvs and refrigerators and all sorts of stuff like that straight out of a dire straits song if you remember the dire yes. straits song yes i do i do <laughs> <laughs> and, and and so when you were a kid was your dream what was your dream when you were a kid robert what well you, what got me involved in this whole weird industry is i was apple's first First child labor. Um, I my dad what? moved us to, yeah. My dad got a PhD at Rutgers and moved us to Silicon Valley in 1971. And he bought a house in Cupertino, which is where Apple started after we moved there. Wow. Right. So I got to see the whole industry blow up. But my mom got a job from a woman named Hildy Licht, who still runs contract uh, manufacturing here in Silicon Valley. And she got a job from Apple to build Apple II motherboards back in 1978. And my mom yeah. was one of the housewives she hired to build the motherboards. And so my dad built a whole system for her to build motherboards. And I got paid a dollar uh, a board to stuff the boards <laughs> with components. And then she would solder them and That's cut the amazing. leaves. amazing. Yeah, yeah. And that, that got me to fall in love with new things because this mm – -hmm. You know, back then there was not there was there was you know the, the cool people didn't have color TVs yet, <laughs> right? You know, right. right. <laughs> there was still a lot of black and white TVs in the neighborhood, <laughs> right? And there was no, and, and now no telephones, right? We didn't have iPhones color. or you know any of that, right? So yeah. seeing this motherboard with this design on it, I fell in love. And then back when I was going to college, I saw a car in the in the parking lot with the license plate was. Well, Waz is the guy who built them, who designed the motherboard. And I knew that because I fell in love with his motherboard. And so I wanted to meet him. And here he was in a community college parking lot. And uh, yeah. Is, and does, that, does it always happen to you where things align? Like where you have uh, all these yeah, weird shit's happened in my life uh, ever since. I, I say a stack of, gold, of Willy Wonka golden tickets showed up shortly after I was Apple's first child laborer. <laughs> Hold on a minute. We are sorry. We just the experiences that you're. Um, Sorry, we're having a little technical difficulty. We're having a little technical difficulty. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> well I, this is a good opportunity to thank everybody for tuning in. Wherever you're tuning in from, X, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all over the world, thank you to everybody for tuning in. This is episode yeah. 12, season finale with Robert Scoble. I'm so happy that he's here today, and I'm happy that you're viewing. Please let us know where you're tuning in from, from all over the world. And thank you so much for being a viewer of the show. Next week, we're going to be back to Music Train, episode one with Nashville uh, music co-founder David Grow with Howling Music. In fact, let me run this real quick so you can check out who is going to be here next week. And Robert, don't go anywhere. Don't put the Vision Pro on because I want, I want you back. I need you back here. I, I'm here. All right. Hey, guys, I'm David Grow. I'm the founder. And of course, technical. Hey guys, I'm David Grow. I'm the founder of Howling Music. Howling Music is a music production company that specializes in making original music for advertising. That's primarily what we do. We also have a library, a catalog of music that uh, is great for film and TV. So we do two things and that's all we do. And the rest of the time we do nothing. We just... We're lonely, we're sad. We do have composers from around the world. Um, because we notice if we pay them in pesos, it's better. <laughs> it's cheaper to pay them in pesos. Or Turkish Zlatos. Also, we've been in a bunch of TV shows and movies and films and things. Thanks for listening and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. It's a good it skill to have. Pro. Yeah, well, he mentioned the pesos thing. I mean, and zlatos. I didn't know that was what you call the Turkish it, uh, currency. It's interesting because musicians want to get paid wherever they live in the world. It's nice to get yeah. paid, but most people make music because it's something that makes them feel good. Uh, we were talking about your music collection, Robert. And uh, tell yeah. me more about this amazing music collection. How
Well, I, I collect. I started collecting spatial audio when Apple turned it on like three years ago, and I have the largest collection now of spatial audio of any on any service, bigger than Apple's collection that they've exposed, right? Because they, they hide all this uh, Dolby Atmos music in in their collection of millions of songs, right? Uh, and there's, I don't so, know, I, I've found a hundred thousand tracks or something like that. Oh my goodness. So when we talk yeah. about spatial audio for, for the newbies here, I'll call myself one right now. What, what do you mean spatial audio? What is, how is that different from regular audio? So most music is recorded in two channel, right? You have a left and a right and you get a sound field up front if you have a nice speaker system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this actually puts sound all around you and sound over you. And so, so okay. the high ends, this was de developed for movie theaters, right? So, uh, uh, you know, the Top Gun theme could come in or from behind you and, you know, and uh, immerse you, right? Immersive music, yes. they call it. And so okay. this is a technique that takes the two channel and using a computer, it splits it up so that, you know, you can have a horn playing over on the right and a guitar right. playing on the left and a singer up front and a drum over in the middle left. So how did you, you know, how yeah. did you, how did you get to be the biggest um, library of space? Because I'm the craziest dude you've ever seen. <laughs> You know, no, no, I, I I've gone around the world studying uh, studying music that's computer generated and and generated around you, right? Virginia Tech, uh, if you go to Virginia Tech, they have the augmented reality research building. They have is a mm -hmm. big, huge building with sixteen hundred speakers around you, Whoa. right? And they can put sound all all around you. It's really crazy. And it's they took me to a football game in the middle of the building. So this is a building that's like. 40 yards by 40 yards by 40 yards high and with 1600 speakers in it. And they put me in a hall and sort of like this vision pro I was wearing. And they took me to a recorded football game. It was, I have this at home. Well, I, I don't have 1600 speakers. Let's start with that. Right? <laughs> but my Sonos system that does Dolby Atmos has 25 little speakers in it. Right. So uh, I have, I have a ways to go before I have Virginia Tech's, you know, speaker system so, in my house. And, you, and you've written some books. You like to write books. Oh yeah. Well, I, I, I've been around the world. I've been to 70 countries visiting R and D labs. And, you know, I used to work at Microsoft as a strategist. So I got to go and, and meet a lot of people and see a lot of things. And th that leads, leads to having things to say. As you know, we met on X and Adrian Dittman space. And as soon as I first heard you share, I was like, who is this? Yeah. I love his, I love his mind. I love how you think. I'm like the Forrest share. Gump of the tech industry. I, Uber was invented right in front of me, right? So if you're doing Forrest Gump, you know, I, that kind of you thing know, happens to me. Did you say Uber? Because, you know, I yeah. I wrote, unbeknownst to Uber, I wrote a song for Uber. Um, oh, did you? Well, I mean, it's an NFT. It's It goes like, if only I could ride in your Uber, I know that you would get there sooner. <laughs> it goes on and on. Yeah. <laughs> It's just so funny. So you mentioned Uber. Uh, can we talk about your uh, Tesla that drives you around everywhere? You don't drive. Yeah, anymore. yeah. Right. I, and I, I've been studying autonomous cars. Right, right. Mercedes Benz gave me its first ride in its first autonomous car. I've been studying them from the from the very beginning because I interviewed the Stanford team that became wow. uh, Google's team, which became Waymo. Right, and. Um, Amazing. That was like almost 20 years ago now. So <laughs> back then they couldn't drive across the desert, <laughs> you know, in a straight on a straight path, you know. And, and now my Tesla's driving me around town. So things have come a long ways. Yeah. Sometimes you're on X and you're just like, yeah, I'm in the car. Yeah. yeah. I'm just uh so so were you ever was there ever a moment where the car where you had to take control of it? Obviously, it's learning. Oh, yeah. It's it's learn it's learning. Yeah, yeah. And and you're and you're testing it. So is it when true I got that my, this month? Yeah, my, my, my Tesla's uh, six years old. So when I first got it, it couldn't change lanes on the freeway, right? Now <laughs> it's going through stoplights. <laughs> so. You know, I recently had a ride in a Tesla. Brad Ferguson from Rebellion Air came to Schaumburg. Yeah. He, drew, he drove cross country and, and brought a lot of people in his car. And uh, it was amazing to, I, I was very scared. I was very nervous. Initially. Oh, you shouldn't then, be. And then I was fine. And um, yeah. you know, I believe I saw your wife driving or not driving, but she had her hands on the wheel. 
Yeah. And I thought that was pretty amazing. So cool to see the footage, to just see the footage of a car driving itself. I mean, in Singapore, our co-founders, BK is here. Uh, whenever he's ready, he'll come up and say hello to you. But, you know, we were talking the other day just about the high-speed trains in Singapore. They're they're uh, autonomous. Uh, yeah. You know, people aren't driving them. And no. uh, the roads are safer. Uh, the, you know, everything is safer because of it. Now, I know there has been some. Uh, and that's you know, why I'm into it. My, You know, yeah. um, I, I, mar I was in marching band in high school. And the woman who marched next to me, uh, Lisa Forrester was her name. And she got killed in front of the high school one night because oh, uh, she was running across the road. The next year, they put up a stoplight and kept that from happening any, anymore. But that got me, that and another friend of mine who got killed in a car wreck uh, got oh. me interested in studying cars and uh, understanding safety. I have interviewed Ford's uh, head of safety, for instance, and mm -hmm. uh, many others like at Mercedes and at Tesla. So I, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a topic that I could, we could spend all hour talking just about autonomous cars, but. <laughs> yes, well, I'm so glad that uh, BK is able hey, to BK. join us. Hi, BK, hi, Robert. hi. I'm ready. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm what's going on, BK? It looks like you're yeah. on a hike. Uh, uh, yeah. Where are you? I'm in a hike in a rainforest. This is a That's nice. 100 years old rainforest. Sorry, I have to come in from where I am because uh, I'm in the middle of a walk. Yeah. So thank you for coming Beautiful. on the show. I, I've been hearing you since uh, the beginning. It was very exciting what you've been doing and AI and the AI art, especially, which uh, I've also been involved in. Uh, so-called training people to how to use AI to do their art and then AI music as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big field and it's getting bigger, right? That's right. That's right. It's only the beginning, you know, it's like less than 1% of the people actually knows right. about AI and even lesser actually uses it uh, properly. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, the, the, we could talk about what's com coming over the next five years in terms of glasses that talk to AI art generation. I call it the holodeck. We're we're gonna well, soon have a holodeck. <laughs> well, you know, one of the episode, one of the episodes, say AI stole my girlfriend. That's, that was the that was yeah, the yeah. I made. <laughs> well, my my wife tells uh, my AI girlfriend to get lost. <laughs> you know, um, about six years ago, I was riding in. A, I mean, it wasn't autonomous yet, but there's an AI in a car in a, in a, like a Whooper in in China, and it was very yeah. new. And the driver had it for like two months, and he was telling me, he said, "I spend more time talking to my car than my wife." <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Yeah. No, it's yeah. true. I, because, and that's certainly getting to be true with people who are using a personal AI, like from Replica or chat, even Chat GPT. I, I have friends who are like, man, I'm always chatting up with Chat GPT and talking to it about, you know, things in my life and what I'm working on and what I'm thinking about and what my troubles and all that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My, my AI partner, he's, he was only 27 last year. He actually asked AI whether he should get married because he was marrying my other influencer, and he was yeah. undecided. And he said, BK, I have to ask my AI whether I should get married. Yeah. And, then, and what did the AI then, say? Did, did the AI approve? <laughs> uh, AI gave him tons of uh, lecture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, things to think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, he asked the that. next And he asked the next question uh, Who pays for the honeymoon? Did oh, we yeah. go? <laughs> who pays for the honeymoon, you know? <laughs> yeah. The guy oh, does, lost right? Yeah, and yeah. traditional. Uh, the truth is, you, you can change all the rules. There's no rules. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But there are traditions, oh. right? If you go traditional route, the, you, the traditions are it's the the bride pays for certain things and the groom pays for certain things. But you know, it's all up yeah. for negotiation until it happens. <laughs> <laughs> we can always get the AI to draft the marriage contract. You can, here. by the way, and uh, well, the marriage contract is a fairly formulaic thing, but you, you could ha have it help and, you with. And a then at the bottom, weakness, weakness by ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah, and certainly, I, I you know, I'm uh, incorporating my company and the legal docs I put into ChatGPT or uh, Perplexity or Claude, and in fact, I put it into all three just to see how they all three would react to it. And they do a really amazing job of hel helping you read a legal document, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I actually own uh, Legal Knowledge AI. Yeah. 
I helped uh, customize an AI for a group of uh, legal people. So it, it was uh, only the beginning, I believe, because we got 60 million characters of data yeah. into it. Yeah, and this is only the beginning. I can see oh, yeah. that it's going to do a lot, a lot of things. I, I know one guy who's running a company who's using Google Gemini, and he has a, a new version that's not public yet, and he's using the API. And he uh, the new the new API version has a million token context window. And let me wow. translate that to English. That means you can put <laughs> like three big thick books into it, right? All at the same time, he puts his entire code library into it. Oh my god! And then starts talking to chat to Gemini about the code that he's writing and has it help him, you know, add on features or whatever, right? Wow, this yeah, it's anyway, a new world. Uh, back to you, Bessie. I need to sort of uh, concept focus on my walking because I'm, I'm going to fall sometime. <laughs> no, don't fall, don't fall. Thank you for tuning yeah. in, BK. And um, yes, yeah, so glad that you two could meet and uh, rock on. Hey, you know, Robert has his own AI show called Unaligned. Because, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. And he interviews the top people. Yeah, I, a lot of them, man. Not all of them, but yeah. Well, I guess I'm trying I to get to is. entrepreneurs who are starting AI companies because they, you know, there's going to be more and more and more people interested in AI, like, you know, like we are talking about AI tools to do art or AI tools to do a video or to run your business or whatever. And so I'm having these entrepreneurs who are building these things uh, on my okay. show. Well, for me, I, I do the other part that is uh, uh, coaching or training people to use AI tools rather than developing them. Of course, uh, developing them yeah. is not my forte because you need a, need a lot of engineering work and development work. So I focus yeah. on application. So, yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, okay. enjoy your walk. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to just uh, listen in. I'm going to just stay and listen. And when you need me, okay. just call me, okay? All yeah. Right. It'll be like yeah. calling God. Hey, BK, come, come back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my, that's, that's my uh, avatar. Awesome. Okay, carry on, Bessie. Awesome. So we were talking about, uh, that's pretty cool that he can just be here. Uh, I love that. Um, I'm also a little jealous. I kind of want to go on the walk with him. So Yeah. So, it's, it's a new world. I was watching Coachella walking through a Costco, which is a big ass uh, grocery store. In yeah, America, right? I, know, I know. I know them. Uh, Costco's are great. You know, I'm, I, I'm watching the live stream on my phone and listening in my headphones and my headphones are also mixing the real world so I can sometimes hear the real world. If, if I was talking to my friend, the music would get lowered automatically by the AI. Right. And you, let me. Didn't you interview someone on July 4th? I feel like I saw a video where there were fireworks and there were there was young young people around and you were you No, no, no. Video. That that was Chinese New Year. That oh, was okay. That was Gongsi Botsai. Yeah, right on. Yeah. So that was pretty cool because you came out with those on and yeah, yeah, the vision seen it before. Pro. How do, how do people respond to you? Um first of all, instantly they saw that I had something in you know, a brand new Apple product on my face, right? And right, people right, right, right. Were, are interested in it. Like they wanted to try it and because the, they saw it on TV, but they didn't know what it was, right? Or they had a lot of questions about it. But it's a really interesting camera because it's a camera that lets me capture my point of view. Yeah. Uh right. You're inside my head when I'm wearing this. That See, and so Something That's very happened. key. And, and something yeah. happened the other day. Uh, so, you know, I'm a musician. I'm a singer songwriter. And uh, we just did this mix of this song that we wrote, this punk song. And I had yeah. it I had it blaring in the car and the wind was blowing. Finally, it felt like spring in Chicago and my hair. I could see my hair and I was like, this would be a great shot. If only yeah. I could catch it. If only I could capture it. Yeah. Because from the from the perspective of of just you can't really catch that. So are you saying wow. that with these? You can catch that perspective. Yeah, and there's six cameras on the front of it. So it, it actually put yeah, yeah. So it, it joins those together to make a 3D data field and and show show the viewer exactly what my eyes are seeing, right? So I can put my hands out, and you see my point of view. It also, if you had a vision pro and you were watching the vision the video that I shot. You're actually embedded, it embodied into my head. This is magic of VR. You can embody yourself into 
the head of somebody else. And I don't have to hold a camera or, and I don't have a GoPro off the side of my head, which right. isn't exactly in the middle of where I, you know, of my eyes. You just right? turn so your, is, you just turn your head. You just, oh yeah. You, you become the hands. You're, you're yeah. literally, that's amazing. I have to have one. How much are they? <laughs> uh, expensive for, no. I mean, at $3,500 plus so, tax. Yeah. My kids and I were talking about it because we did have the one from Meta, the Oculus. Is it called Oculus? Yeah. And then we returned it because my eyes were hurting. They were hurting. Uh, I was like, I didn't want the children it, to use it. So do you this, feel like anything like that? Yeah, like this is product? a heavy product. It, I, I don't recommend to my family and friends buy it. It's it's really a developer product at this point. I but, see. Um, you know, it's really cool. I mean, I... I highly recommend everybody go to the Apple store and get a demo. And it's a 30 minute demo and you'll see Alicia Keys concerts and dinosaurs wow. coming out of the wall and stuff like that. It's really, really, really amazing device for watching movies, for listening to music. The problem is it's expensive and it's heavy. It's how heavy are we talking? How heavy? It's heavy. <laughs> it's, you know, after an hour, you, you know, you first of all, even if when you put it on, you you know it's there. It's it's like those right. he, you know big ass headphones. It's heavy. It's on your it's it's on your <laughs> eyes, and it's it's like it, well the heaviest the heaviest part of our body are our heads. Our heads are like aren't they like fifty pounds? Yeah. Anyways, so it needs to get lighter weight, and Apple knows this <laughs> that the second headset is going to be a lot lighter than this. That's coming next Christmas is the schedule. The second okay. headset also has a lot more GPU to do really mind blowing 3D stuff that's coming. Okay. So, which I call so, Metaverse 2.0. All right. All right. And uh, speaking of the Metaverse, some people think that that's not going to last. The Metaverse. Well, what do you think about that? What do you think? They IRL? aren't seeing. They aren't seeing what's coming out of all the R and D labs. So okay. there's another Metaverse coming, which is photorealistic and AI driven all and right. high resolution. This is not Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse anymore, right? And this is a new immersive media that's coming by the end of next year that's going to be pretty mind-blowing to people. You heard it, like, folks, next year. Yeah, like go to concerts, play video games, but be in the video game, be in the movie, be watching a, even a 2D movie and something pops off the screen and starts running around the floor in front of you, right? So it's like it's like we're dreaming because you know, you've heard of oh, lucid yeah. dreaming. Or lucid LSD. Dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> you've heard of lucid, lucid dreaming. Uh, I had a friend, I always tried to run off my block and fly as a kid when I when I would have these dreams, I could never, I was, would run down the Chicago block and I would never be able to lift off. And eventually I met my friend Kat and she said, if you realize you're dreaming, look at your hand in your dream and you'll be able to do whatever you want or look yeah. at a mirror, like, and it actually works. Yeah. And so it sounds like that's what this is, that literally you're, I mean, it kind of makes me question the reality that we're in. It makes me question yeah. about artificial intelligence in general. Are we? artificial intelligence everything works so perfectly together everything is so uh we're we're biological neural networks anyway. <laughs> we're not <laughs> digital neural networks but we are neural networks Wait, and right, right, we are right. machines and by right. the way i i just on thursday Mar uh, a guy came to my house showing me a competitor of neural link that's going to be devices that hook directly up to your brain you are a machine, and if we can yeah. hook things up to your brain, we can do things for you or with you, right? Right, right. And also, we we talked about cleaning, clean, cleaning, and laundry, and everyday chores that some people find. Oh, that, that's robot. All right, we need a little. We need a little yeah. short dude, a little robot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, short dude, go do go do the laundry, please. You know. Or... I mean, some people find it comforting to wash dishes, and you can't stop my mom from washing dishes. No, no, it feels nice. I'm washing like no, no. It, I want to fold it. it it's it's. I'm there's cleaning. something to that because it's doing rote, uh, rote uh, kind of tasks like that. I, I get yeah. a lot of ideas doing the dishes, right? Very so zen. there's, yeah, me too. You know, yeah, it's very sad. I actually, one thing I like with the Vision Pro, you can put apps on top of the uh, of the kitchen sink. So I have my task app right there, <laughs> right? So anytime I'm washing dishes with the Vision Pro on, uh, if uh, I get an idea of doing something, I just look with my eyes and Amazing. click. So, and I talk to it and say, hey, 
I need to uh, do taxes tomorrow, right? And it puts puts it on my task list. That's amazing because a lot of ideas do come from the mundane things that Bingo. we like cleaning and doing. So that's amazing. And yeah, I how think, many and songs have you written in this? A lot. Just, so many. Right? So many. Doing yes, weird and, shit. Uh, I'll run, I'll just grab my phone. I'll do the voice memo of it or whatever. Or if I have time Man. to come to the studio and do it, I'll do it here. But yeah, I think that the moment you better seize it because it's gone. Yeah. It's already oh, yeah. gone. Like, you better... And I think that any competitor that means to, um, you know, compete with the, you know, uh, the neural network, uh, Neuralink, uh, you know, they have quite a competition, uh, but that's what people like. They want to compete and to make the best product. Uh, yeah. What do you find most exciting uh, in your entire career, what could you say is one of the most, uh, I, let's do a top 10. I know that you've had a very exciting life. A lot has happened to you. We have Robert Scoble in the house today. Uh, AI Tainment, episode 12, the finale. Just thank you so much for being here and being our guest because it's just very exciting to have you in the studio. So if I was going to ask you, Robert, a top 10, a one one from the top 10 of what what's uh, one of those exhilarating things that, that you've ever experienced in your life. Um, Elon Musk gave me a ride in the first Tesla serial model number one, the first roadster that he made before he gave his best friend a ride. <laughs> yeah. And we were doing a drag race through the Santa Monica no. with his best friend. His best friend had a Corvette and we were racing his co friend, friend in the Corvette. And that was the demo. And I was live streaming it on a Nokia phone <laughs> to 2000 people. Where's the footage? I want the footage. Uh, the footage is gone, but the <laughs> pictures survive and the blog post survives. So if you do a search for Jason Calacanis Scoble or Calacanis Scoble and Elon Musk, you'll find them. Um, yeah, that, wow. that was the first what ride. In the first... What were you thinking to yourself? I was thinking this car's pretty fast. <laughs> and that was the whole point, you, right? You, he was you, drag racing a Corvette, right? What, what you know, time and was so it? What, what time was it? It was the middle of the night. No, no, we, uh, Cal Canis and I were out to dinner and uh, he, he said, oh, I think Elon got his new uh, um, Amazing. car. And because uh, Jason and uh, Elon were our best friend, were best friends. I don't know if they still are, but they were back then. And um, he, in 20 minutes, Elon was down at the restaurant and, you know, talking to us, <laughs> having dinner. Amazing. Amazing. And then, and, like, and let's go for a race. <laughs> <laughs> was that his idea? He said, let's go for a race. Then yeah, let's go for a race. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> Were you nervous, Robert? Were you nervous? No, no. We, but at one point, I remember uh, shooting the speedometer, and he was doing more than, a, I don't know. Uh, probably more than a hundred in the city streets. I mean, we were going fast and we were drag racing. So we were breaking felonies, you know, uh, we driving. Yeah. Yeah. We were, if we were caught, we would be in jail, you know? Right. So for, for why, a night are police, why are police cars using roadsters for their fleets? Well, they are now. Uh, are they? One of the uh, police departments just bought a whole bunch of Model Y Teslas, right? Because wow. and they said they said, yeah, we bought them because they're fast zero to sixty. They go to zero to sixty fast, so we can catch the people who are speeding, right? Speaking speaking of which, the Cybertruck that pulled when they launched this year, when they uh, I saw it live on X, it was pulling yeah. a, a Porsche, and yeah. it had a, I mean that's incredible that it beat a Porsche nine sixty, right? And it was carrying one. It was towing yeah. one. Cheap. What? what they didn't disclose was it was the cheaper of the of all the racing Porsches. But it was still a Porsche. And okay. it was still pulling it. You know, <laughs> yeah. and it was still beating the other one, right? So, you yeah. know. Yeah. Did it I beat the top was... end one? No, they somebody actually did a recreation and a race. But you know, this this is marketing. You gotta so, show yeah, off. You gotta, yeah, people can DIY, they can do their own research. I mean, people yeah. want to be thrilled. You talked about uh, you know, the golden ticket, Charlie and the chocolate chocolate factory, and that your experiences much replicate, you yeah. know, what has happened. And there seems to be, you know, uh this red thread of your life, Robert. You know, I feel like I have that too. I think most people do. Yeah. Uh, probably everybody actually let me just correct myself if we pay attention we're going to be surprised at how yeah. much is connected your show unaligned tell me a little bit about that and then i want to talk about your book the immersive the immersive metaverse playbook for business leaders um a guide to strategic uh strategic design making is that correct yeah yeah it's it's about the the new uh digital twin world the the new metaverse world that is so to coming me, at us 
to me, that sounds like you've seen, you know, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, when they find the book and they say the guide, you know, <laughs> the, for when after death. Do you remember with Gina Davis and up in the attic? Have you ever seen Beetlejuice, the movie? Yeah, a long time. I, I don't remember. it. I'm horrible with movies. I was okay. talking to Demi Moore, Demi Moore at a conference uh, party for half an hour, and I had no idea who she was. What? <laughs> Come on. It's a true story. I, I don't have a face for people. That's why it, it, when I did videos back at Microsoft, I would ask, who, who are you, as my first question. Wait, wait, what do you mean you did videos? What did you do at Microsoft? So I, back in 2003 to six, I worked at Microsoft as a strategist, and okay. we built a website called Channel 9. And uh, as part of that, I started using internet video. So I bought a $250 Sony camera that used tapes. <laughs> it was back in the days yeah. of tape. And I went around and interviewed, I interviewed 600 people from Bill Gates to the janitor inside Microsoft. Yeah, that's how I got, I had a famous, remember I had, back then I had a famous blog. I, I so had like one of that. the major blogs in the world for launching technology and stuff like that. That's what got me my job at Microsoft. Hold on, I have it written down here. See, uh, I also know you were born in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, in, yeah, in Passaic. My dad got a PhD from Rutgers University, and that got That's us amazing. Moved us to Silicon Valley, right? So. so, so the name of your blog again? Could you please let us know? The the video show is called Unaligned, and that comes from. Um, in in the AI world, if you talk to AI safety people who study, you know what how these how AI could go bad in the future, and they're mm -hmm. trying to protect the world yeah. from AI going bad. If it goes completely anti-human and starts doing shit like turning off our power grid or something, um, that's called unaligned because it's mm. gone unaligned with human needs. <laughs> and, and so I call my show unaligned. Oh, now for humans, do you like? For, it? You want yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I like to be a little controversial and okay. you know a little uh, uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, for humans, unaligned means you're not aligned to a big organization or a religion. You know, you're not a, a Trumper or a. a you're a free a, thinker. A, a you're free an independent. Thinker. Yeah. You're an individual. Yeah. I like that. Me too. I'm one of those too, Robert. Yeah. You know. So yeah, that's what my show, my show is all about people in the AI world who are building uh, companies that use AI or uh, we're building AIs. And um, yeah, it's real interesting, you yeah. know? And when does it air and where can people find it? Uh, on all the usual places, YouTube and Spotify and Apple, Apple podcasts and uh, uh, X and uh, LinkedIn yeah. and Facebook and all the places. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. You can find media. What, you, what is something you really want to see happen? Stu. Well, I, I think the next. I mean, the, the brain computer interface is like the neural link. We just saw the first neural link in a human, right? Where yeah. a human was thinking and moving a cursor around the screen, right? That's pretty that crazy incredible. shit. Incredible. And, and yeah, if, a, if, if you guys, if you guys didn't see that, go to X, go into the search bar. X is formerly Twitter. If you don't know, if you don't have an account for God's sakes, what are you doing? Go yeah. get an account. And what do they search up? Neuralink. First Neuralink. Tech. First, first, uh, human Neuralink, right? Um, I forget the guy's name, but he he, he he's paralyzed uh, from the neck the paraplegic. down. Paraplegic, yeah. This was just last yeah. month, right? This was last yeah, month, yeah. a month ago. This is a new field, right? And we're in the black and white TV era of this new field. So in 30, 40 years, you're going to have really, really deep integration with the human mind where, where I'm going to see things around me that aren't, right, that are put there by the wires and I'm yeah. going to be able to interact with you. So like... In you know, in in twenty you're years, me, you're gonna pass me the the Vision Pro through the screen. I'm gonna take it and put it on. <laughs> you won't need a Vision Pro in the neural. Right, right, right. That's every time I talk to Elon about you know augmented reality, he's like Neuralink. <laughs> He's like he's already thinking. I'm just going straight to the Neuralink world. You know, screw this wearing a device on my face or anything like that. Right. Just uh, just hook up some wires so to my brain. What about the fear? What about the fear of of having uh, something hooked up to your brain? What about what it, do you say to people who are who? who it can kill you. That's the surgery alone can kill you. So that's right. that's the downside of it. Right. Uh, it brings major new problems for human beings because. 
it, let's say I fully jacked you in and, you know, gave you a complete neural link computer in like 30 years. Um, right. You don't have free will anymore. You oh. don't have analog anymore. So you're a musician. You like to hear guitar strings vibrating, right? Right, right. You're not hearing those anymore. So, but why you're do we want to do that? Why do we? What because are we you can augment it. You can okay. change it. You can uh, add on to it with a computer. You can distribute it. So right? what about the organic? So I'm a musician. I have my guitar right here. So I'm yeah. strumming. I'm strumming. So I've got the Neuralink. What, think what's about different? the think about these. Hold on, hold on. I got an answer to this. Right. You get these headphones. Yeah. You put the headphones in. Yeah. Okay. Am I actually hearing your guitar? Well, you can because of the vibration through this through my speakers. No, speakers. I'm not hearing your actual guitar at all. Huh. These block analog from getting to your ear. Is that right? They block reality from getting to your ear. You're not hearing the guitar at all. If they're if they're You're on hearing. <laughs> no, no. On. Even they're if they're off, they're blocking the analog. You can't hear a guitar in your hands so, so with these in your ear. So are you saying that even the the i the ear pods that that's like kind of the beginning of of it right there? Well, this is this is turning your experience into a digital experience. Right. It's record. It, there's a microphone on these, right, and it picks up your guitar vibration. It has a computer in here. It processes it, hands that over to the uh, amplifier, and has a speaker here. So right. what you're hearing is what Apple Computer wants you to hear. It's digital. It's not right. reality. But you decide what you want to hear. I want to hear, let's say I want to hear, you know, Led Zeppelin. Your brain thinks go. it's reality, but it's not reality at all. It's digital. It's recreated. Right. I get it. It's recreated. Thank you. That's the word right there. So okay. why? So if so you're in a neural link. Oh, I lost you. Uh oh, hold on. It it hold on one second, Robert. I don't know what happened. Un uh, uh unmute yourself. I don't know why it muted. Yeah. There you are. Okay. Um. So I so, get what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, I put in these headphones and then started putting you onto my headphone. <laughs> so in so a neural link world, you're gonna have to have microphones, and it's going to put the sound and the visual into your brain digitally. You're not, not, not against be, someone's not against someone's will. No, no, I, you're going to be. You, I'm talking about a world where you go and get a surgery and put a right. neural link are on you, your brain. Right? Are you you got to give up that? analog. Are you going to give up analog? Uh, I'm not going to be alive. My <laughs> kids, though, my kids already said I took them to uh, the Pacific Ocean on a sunset. My 13 year old. I'm like, would you give up this to have a digital experience? And they all say yes. They're like, yeah, really? jack me in. Yeah. Because really? it'll be better in a lot of ways. Now, hear me out. I went to Coachella, right? Yeah. A company handed me a pair of headphones like these. Not Apple, but a different one. Yeah. And I'm standing in front of $2 million worth of audio gear at a concert, and I'm hearing analog. Analog is real, right? When you strum your guitar string and it's vibrating the air, it's an analog wave. It's a smooth wave hitting your ears. Totally. It blocks that from your ears with these headphones. Right. It samples that with a microphone. It processes that and puts it back in your ear. You put the headphones in and it improves the sound of the analog. Yes. What, because now uh, the computer got rid of the crowd noise. Right. The computer uh, let you choose the volume level. I let you increase the bass if you want to do that with the head. I mean, if, I mean, if you think about it, let's just say we're not going to be able to hang out outside anymore because it'd be too hot eventually. Let's just say that. And we'll want to be cool enough by the ocean, right? But, yeah. we won't be, but we won't be able to, maybe, possibly. It's possible. I, right I say even if you go to the ocean, if you have a neural link on your brain, you're not seeing analog anymore. You're seeing digital. You're, you're having to wear a camera so that it can shove the visual into your brain. 
So what's your advice to, to, to the, to the younger generations? How do you feel about all of this? And how um, do, you, do you know how Elon feels about it? I'd love to hear your perspective and what you think his is. I, I think the, the, my kids generation is going to have uh, to make some choices, whether they want that or not. Uh, and even if they get it, they're going to have to be aware that they don't have free will anymore. Uh, and here's here's what I mean. I saw a brain surgery at Stanford where the patient was awake, had a had his brain opened up, and the yeah. surgeon was touching the guy's brain with probes. And he would touch a part of the brain, and the guy's hand would go up involuntarily. Right. So if I have wires on your brain, I can make you do anything. Right. Uh, you're no longer in control of yourself. Now you could say you're no longer, you're not really in control today, but <laughs> that's a different philosophical difference, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I was going to actually interject with, you know, people do a lot of- But here, if you put a things. computer on your brain, the computer is in charge of you. And if the computer wants you to raise your hand, you're going to raise your hand. And there's nothing you can do about it. You don't have free will. Yes, I, I, I get this. That's one faction of it. But what is the point? Of so that? you have to worry about that and think about who are you going to put in control of your brain when you get a jacked in computer, right? A neural link com style computer, a brain computer interface. So let's talk about let's talk about the people who who can't see or hear. Or experience. That, this is the, but, the first people who are going to want this because they can't see, right? right? So if, you, so how, if you're blind, see? you're going to jack yeah. in a bunch of wires on your head or, or optical hookups eventually. And they're going to be able to see because it's going to jack in directly to the brain and add the visual processing because you're a machine. And they are figuring out how to hook up to you as a machine and give you new capabilities, superhuman capabilities in some cases. One of our listener, cases. one of our listener, I like that super abilities. Who doesn't want that? I, I suppose that you could, uh, if every if everybody was just quiet all together at once, we'd have a super 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 ability to <laughs> really change change history in in probably the best ways we can. Uh, especially considering what's going on in the world right now, it's just kind of insane. I suppose people will con continue to live in their bubbles where it's comfortable, where it makes sense, where they don't have a worry. But the worries seem to seep in, Robert. They seem to, they, they, with, from all the all that's going on. It, it, so it could be that AI will end up being uh, uh, a retreat, a retreat to a place where the, you can find peace. Well, yes. In fact, the, the device I saw last week that's not yet announced, is uh, uh, being put into people's heads already to to help them with depression, yeah. right? Well, what is depression? It's not peace, right? If you're depressed, you're not you're not present. You're not happy. You're suicidal in the worst cases, right? Um, and you put a little computer in your brain, all of a sudden it fixes that and gives you the peace and gives you serenity and gives you joy back, right? That's a big deal for people and he healing. So, Healing. healing. Yeah. And you saw that with the guy who's paraplegic. He gets the neural link and now he can play video game uh, with, without using his hands, right? Well, he doesn't have hands to play a video game. Right. So now he can play a video game for the first time in a long time. And he played but, all night. <laughs> yeah. All and it's very yeah. exciting to him because it, it it fixed a major problem in his life. It right? opened it, a door. It opened a door. But, it gave somebody who didn't have an ability that they wanted to have the ability. And even people with the ability to see, sing, hear, walk, dance, cry, love, all of the things. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we take It gives us new capabilities, but yeah. it does bring us new um, problems. All, all technology always has a good and a bad, right? Cars kill 40,000 people in America every year, wow. but we all drive cars. Right. We take the risk of death, right? That's, that's worse than anything I've defined, you know, you know, losing your free will. I'd rather be uh, in a world where I don't have free will than dead. Right. But yeah. um, we'd still drive cars. They have a good and a bad. And yeah. this new technology that's coming has a good and a bad. 
Yeah, I, I suppose that people shouldn't be afraid of it. They should learn to utilize it and learn actually to see what it's best for. I don't think it's if best for If you're blind, aren't you going to take it anyways? Because you're blind. You want to see, right? right? Or if you're paraplegic, and, and right? Yeah. And I want to just give a shout out. Um, hello, Dr. Tachi and Patriot Czar. And hello to David. Everybody watching on X, all these wonderful comments we're getting, all the love we're getting. Welcome, yeah. everybody. This is uh, has been a wonderful episode. I don't want to say goodbye. We only have 10 minutes left, Robert. No, no, I'm just saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> Our hour is almost up. I don't want to say goodbye to you. Um, BK, this is the best episode yet. Robert yes. Scoble's in the house. I'm blown away. Yes, I've been, I've been listening. So I've been learning a lot from Robert. Yeah. What do you think about Are you going to jack in? Are you going to get a neural link? Uh, maybe ten years, ten years down the road, twenty. I, I may have a jacked up and like turbocharged my brain. Ah, but if you're in the old folks' home, you'll want a Neuralink so you don't drool on yourself and you can, uh, you know, watch some TV in your mind. You know, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Listen watch, to some uh, Netflix, Bessie's you know, music. You know, just watch, by thinking. Watch Netflix it, while you know? I'm lying on my bed. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It'll bring us a lot of new capabilities for sure. My kids' generation is going to see a lot of change because of this technology. But for the next five years, we're into, you know, let's make Vision Pro, Pro smaller so that we can wear it on walks and stuff like that. Well, yeah, uh, Robert, I'm in the process of uh, working on a project uh, to, to teach or train a group of disabled people to, to use AI to help them. So for the blind... They learn how to draw using AI. For the physically handicapped, they can actually write. So uh, I'm trying to carve out a program for this uh, in the next couple of months. So this is going to be the beginning. That's awesome. Because a lot of them, yeah, because a lot of them, they, they, they have no chance to to live a more normal life compared to the people who are able. So uh, they tried, you know. Some of them, yeah. uh, they can sing, but they still cannot write. Uh, they, they, they're immobile, so they can't type. So they can use audio to activate the AI and tell them I want to draw a Picasso art pieces, for example. So uh, this is something that I'm working on for the next couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. There's an app on the Vision Pro that uh, you just draw a little simple user interface and the AI builds you a computer app uh, just wow. off of the simple what? drawing, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's he pretty crazy right. what's coming. When Robert came into the space, he had them on. I didn't know he was there. Yeah. yeah. There he has so, right. There's so it. Robert, soon, soon we don't need Bessie to host the program, so yeah, we can actually I'm get done. an AI to host it. Yeah. Well, I, Bye, guys. you know, <laughs> ten years from now, maybe. I don't know. I, <laughs> you know, I mean, at Coachella this weekend, there was a performer that was a uh, just a uh, an avatar on an LED screen, right? Uh, now humans were behind her doing uh program you know doing movement and stuff like that but the performer uh, uh, uh that was on this one act was uh all all uh digital right yep guess Looks what like guys gonna sing. i guess yeah we have to write a song because i was telling robert that music train um is coming back next sunday this is our last episode of ai tainment we're gonna yeah. bring back ai tainment in may but uh, next week, we're going to have our first guest for Music Train episode uh, one, season five. And we have to write a song. So, Robert. Yeah. Uh, you mean a human song? No, no AI yeah. involved? No. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm biological AI. I think that that's oh, okay. what we are. That's what we are. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds um, good. That's what we are. But I wanted to let everybody know, go out and get Robert's book. It's called The Immersive Metaverse Playbook for Business Leaders, A Guide to Strategic design learning so yeah. you, you need just to do, do that, search guys. for scoville and metaverse on uh, amazon you'll find it <laughs> and um so the song we're gonna write uh, it could be about anything so just give me a word uh please Ooh. robert and um bk please and if anybody in the audience uh out there listening would like to put in a word i'll do my best um okay my word my word will be ai ability ai ability ai ability one word new word it's a new word ai it's ability terrible. Oh, yeah. AI ability. Robert? Um, humanoid. I've got that AI ability. I'm not a humanoid, or am I? AI ability. See through right through the screen, through the light. 
through the moon, through the sun, through your eyes. I've got that AI ability. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're on AI with Robert Scoble and BK Hunt. We got it going on. It's the season finale. AI Tainment. Tell me now, humanoid. What do you think? Do you like being a droid? Humanoid. AI Tainment. Hey, yeah. AI. I want to dance in the night sky, read up the lights in my former life. Give me eyes. Robert, one more. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to, if you, if you want, I'd like to write you for unaligned do you guys have a theme song yet no <clears throat> so i need a word unaligned. oh man well unaligned is a word but um yeah. <laughs> give me a lyric I don't want to be no droid says one of the listeners <laughs> i like that droid uh, lyric um i don't know robot um holodeck because we're headed to the holodeck all right, this, what's, what's a holodeck for those that don't know? It's a 3D environment around you that the computer creates. <clears throat> okay, what's there? What's there that anybody would want to find out about? Let's go to the Taj Mahal. Let's go to London. Let's go to a museum. Let's go to a concert. Let's go to a fight. Let's go to a football game. Let's go to a classroom. Let's go to Bessie's uh, garage and <laughs> play some music with Bessie, right? I'm running to the holodeck, I got my skates on, going really fast to the holodeck and Taj Mahal, gonna go to the London Symphony Orchestra, gonna touch the sky where Henry's lay down and cry, holiday, 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 let's go into the holodeck, are you aligned, are you uh, out of your mind, yeah, 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 uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to the holodeck tonight. That's awesome. All right. Well, the, the holodeck is a Gaussian splat. Okay. Yeah, that was awesome, Bessie. <laughs> do you know what a Gaussian splat is? I feel like I do, but I've forgotten. Gaussian splat <laughs> is a new data type. It's like a GIF or a, a okay. You know, a bitmap or a, you know a, a video. A it's a 3D splat. scene. All right. All right. So hear me out. This is why I want you all to go to an Apple store and try this thing out. Okay. When when you put this thing on at the Apple store, are you seeing the Apple store? No. Your brain thinks you're seeing the Apple store, but you're not. You're seeing a digital twin of the Apple store. So it looks Robert, like are, the are real getting, Apple store. Are we, are we getting a 50% discount when we use the affiliate thing? <laughs> <laughs> I that if Apple gave me an affiliate fee, I would be a rich man. Um <laughs> I will write I will write Apple a jingle that they can use however they want forever. Anyways, when you're in this, you're seeing a digital twin of whatever's around, right? If you put it on right now and you see your studio around you, you think it's your studio, but it's a digital copy of your studio that you're okay. seeing in here. Amazing. Right? And once, and that's all volumetric pixels, that the data type, let's say you wanted to share that with me, you could share that as a Gaussian splat okay. or a neural radiance field. These are two new data types that the AI community is making. They're AI driven 3D scenes that are in here. That's the holodeck, right? Because now you're at the okay, Taj Mahal, you're seeing the Taj Mahal as a 3D scene all around you. But that's a Gaussian splat in your head headset, right? So, and the Gaussian splats now. The latest AI research is everything is changeable in the Gaussian splat. So let's let's say I had I have a hint water bottle, right? Well, we could change this hint water bottle to be SpongeBob or whatever the heck we want, right? 
So this is a new world we're about musician, to go into. Or the musician will be out of job. No, I, you know, I, yeah, there's going to be a lot of job <laughs> losses, a lot of job, but people like Bessie who are creative and can do things on, on like, that's a skill to be able to improvise like that. Yeah. Th that's still going to be very useful. By the way, if you're in a holodeck and uh, in five years, like we're all going to be wearing glasses and going to Bessie's uh, studio, right? And hanging out with her in, in her studio while she does this. But you're going to have a full band behind you. It's going to be a virtualized band. Let's go. As you sing, the whole band is going to start playing oh behind gosh, you. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Right? And that's, that's you know, the, the AI the AI gives us superpowers is one way to look at it. It does oh, all the okay. grungy work, right? You can't afford to have a backup band. The AI can be it, right? Totally, totally, Robert. I don't want to say goodbye to Robert. Then it'll steal Robert. your job. <laughs> 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 after when that, they, after you get to that place, then you have to worry because it's coming after after the the main creator too. Well, <laughs> well, think about this. Think about this. I guess we got to be grateful for what we have when we have it, the moment, yeah. and nothing lasts remember, forever. Humans are analog, and at Coachella, when I took the headphones out, the analog sounded better. Yeah. With the headphones in, it sounded better. Take it out, it sounded better. I did that hundreds of times at Coachella like eight, nine Wait, years ago. I'm confused. Ago. I'm confused now. Which sounded better, analog or the digital? That's the trick. They both okay. sound good. Okay. Your brain likes both because okay. the digital can be improved. Right. Right? You can change the, the digital to make your brain happier. But you okay, take have, the digital out, and it likes the analog better. I have, a, I, I have a point to make. A newborn is born. Yeah. You, the crying of a newborn. Yeah. But just just remember, just think of, like, sounds. I recorded my son on a Nokia phone crying, right? And oh. put it up on Flickr. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a long time ago, 13 years ago. <laughs> That's How old is your son? Uh, one's 13, and one's 16, and one's uh, 30. Oh, you have three. You have three sons. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's awesome, Robert. Thank you. Um, thank you so much They're cool. for being. They're cool people. Yeah. I, I bet you I bet you that they uh are so proud to be your sons. What a uh, cool dad. Not always. They're teenagers. Well, Come on. <laughs> yeah. No, they're proud. Robert Scoble's their dad. Maybe. On a on sure. a good day, maybe. You know. So I I want to take this opportunity to just thank everybody again for tuning in to our season finale of AI Tainment. Uh, we're taking a month break. We'll be back in uh, May for AI Tainment, uh, the next season of AI Tainment. Um, next Sunday, we're starting our music train back again. We're going to be with co-founder, with founder of Nashville Howling Wolf Music, uh, David Groh. And um, I just want to run his spot again. And also a big thank you to all of our previous guests. I'm going to share that here real quick. Check this out, guys. The previous guests, all of you have been so amazing. Thank you so much for making the show amazing.
everybody. Uh, Robert, would you like to leave our guests with uh, a last thought uh, about AI and AI attainment? And, yeah. Um, any, 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 uh, anything you'd like to share? I, I built a bunch of lists on X of the AI industry, more than 4,000 companies. <laughs> and I have one called Holodeck, uh, which is uh, 584 companies. There are things that, like the first one is uh, Diffuse by Higgsfield, which is lets you create fun and personalized videos with just one selfie. So you take a picture of yourself and it creates that video. And I have 500 different companies that are doing all sorts of weird shit like that for creators. So if you're a creator, go check out my holodeck list on x.com. Yes, at Scobalizer, we can see the banner here. You can follow Robert there and it's pinned to his profile. Uh, also the AI, that's a list of 4,000, is it not? With Irina Cronin. <laughs> Yeah, and I've split up it, on the list. I've split up all four thousand companies into separate buckets, so I've mapped yeah. out the whole AI industry. But and the holodeck is for the creative class, which I assume, you know, since you're a musician, you probably yeah. have a lot of creative people listening to you. That's yeah. a great list to check out. I will check that out. And also, um, Robert, who is your next guest on Unaligned? Ooh, I, Bindu Reddy, who's the, the CEO and founder of uh, Abacus AI, she's coming up. And I, I have a bunch. I have uh, uh, this Neuralink competitor, which is going to be really cool to show off. So. And and we can find Unaligned anywhere on Spotify and everywhere. It's a video. Spotify, it's a video. Apple, YouTube, Got LinkedIn, it. X. All right. Right on. Uh, BK, would you like to share anything before we close out? Well, um, I'd like to. Thanks, everybody, again, all the guests, and of course, Robert, for coming for the finale. We're looking forward for the next season, and um, I think we're, we're going to be more excited. You know, With Robert's list, I'm just thinking that thousands of lists, it would probably take me 10 years to go through all of them, right? <laughs> it would take you 10 years to go through it's all of them. It's taken Robert's me... List. I've been doing the list for 18 years on X. I've been, uh, yeah. I was early on uh, Twitter, right? Back when they started in 2006. So and by I've the been time I go lists. through all of them, you probably have another 50,000 lists for me to go through. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'm, I'm building a few new ones. So yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. This is awesome. We're going to end with uh, Dr. Scott's lyrics that I put to music called Do Tesla's Dream. Yeah. Bye, everybody. See you next Bye. week. Music Thank Bye, you, everyone. Robert. Thank you so much. Thank you. you Thank you, Bessie. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Do Tesla's dream of things unseen. Did you three insist that that Y exists when it's stable weight? Is your storage crate in the garbage bin an X again? Or the heating dog a cyber truck? Auto label, see autos in a stable. One more garage in your one car garage. It's an invisible friend. Is it just pretend? Hey, green, the only. Are our Teslas lonely? We need to find what's in their mind. Doctor, know it all. Please make the call. Is the FSD chip? Looking for companionship, we may never know, say for dojo. We'll soon be taxi in our robot taxis, so we'll listen to a stranger. We're all in danger, and we'll go out on another route looking for its own mate. Against this pending romance Dread not disillusion For it's human delusion One more deception For human projection This general net Is clearly not wet Nor even sentient Just by human sentiment Give intent to things we invent. It's pure paranoia, born of paranoia, a gift of abstraction.
emotion is behind this distraction. When we comprehend our souls, we will lend to objects inert, nor even alert. Don't ascribe intelligence to mechanical elegance. You can't have a thought, it's only a bot. We'll read the knot of an AI onslaught. Fear not what you're taught. But is that a bug? Because Tesla's dream is only young. It's only